This research methods in psychology video is all about how psychological research has improved the economy. You may not realize how much of an impact psychological research has had on the world around you. From the moment you've been born, how hospitals and schools and businesses operate have been set up to make you a functioning, productive member of society. And psychological techniques have also been used to manipulate you into being a consumer of products. Psychboost.com, over 170 videos to help you with your qualification, and Patreon supporters can access bonus resources, tutorial videos, and the Discord channel. So the economy, a simple definition is the production and consumption of goods and services. It's easy to see, like any science, that the lessons learned from psychological research can be used in society by governments and companies to improve the economy. For example, if you want to produce more goods and services, it's a good plan to have a population that is well educated and physically and mentally healthy so they can be efficient employees. Now, if you want to consume more as a population, you need to figure out how to make people want to buy those goods and services. And if you want tax money to pay for public services, it's a good idea to do both of these things as well as convince people to pay their taxes. This section is great to use across the A-level as evaluations, and it's best understood by giving examples. So let's look at five examples of how psychological research has been used to improve the economy. Maternal deprivation, hospital visits and adoption. Research by Rutter on Romanian orphans and by Harlow on monkeys showed how a lack of early maternal affection can have a severe long-term negative effect on emotional and intellectual development. This has led to better advice from midwives on child rearing, hospitals improving visiting hours for unwell children, and prioritising maternal contact in the first few hours of life. Also, adoption agencies placing children with loving families much sooner. These measures have led to better outcomes for children leading to a more productive adult population, producing a better workforce and overall economy. Social influence, nudge unit. Research on normative and informational social influence, so people's desire to conform to be liked or to do the correct action, has been used by governments to improve tax collection, recycling and increase giving to charity. This improves the economy by raising government income and giving the government more money to spend on other services. Conditioning, Facebook and loot boxes. Companies like Facebook have applied behavioural theories such as Skinner's Opera and Conditioning to the design of their services. For example, using social rewards like likes when people post to the service. This keeps people engaged, and the more people engage with Facebook, well, the more advertisement revenue it can make. A particularly powerful form of reinforcement, variable ratio reinforcement, which is given rewards in an unpredictable way to drive compulsive behaviour, is used by gambling companies and computer game companies with loot boxes to addict players, increasing profits. I didn't say this would be all ethical applications of psychology. The role of neurotransmitters, drug treatments. Research that identified the role of neurotransmitters in mental health conditions, such as anxiety, depression, OCD and schizophrenia, have led to drug treatments that have been highly effective in reducing symptoms, allowing people who suffer mental health conditions to return to work. Few people off work improves the economy. Memory, the cognitive interview and the legal system. Research on the limitations of eyewitness testimony by researchers like Loftus has led to more careful use of eyewitness evidence in court and the development of more effective policing techniques such as the cognitive interview. Putting people in prison costs money and is ineffective if they're innocent while the criminal is free to commit more crimes against society. Improving the criminal justice system saves the government money in the long run which helps the overall economy. That was just a few examples. Now I've told you these, you can probably imagine how many examples there are across the A-level specification. Almost any psychological finding can be applied in a way that improves the economy. Now this often makes a great evaluation of a theory, because if you can explain the wider implications of the theory, you're showing you actually understand what it's showing about human psychology. Some of the other topics I could have covered are how psychological research has improved physical health, relationships, advertising, human resources, productivity and educational techniques. Why not try to make statements like my five with some of those? Now, of course, I've taken an economic perspective in this video, but it might be more important to consider the social benefits of these theories, ideas that have improved people's lives in ways that have nothing to do with money. So that was psychology and the economy. I have six tutorial videos covering the 2017, 18 and 19 AS and A-level research method sections. These videos have worked examples to every question and are full of exam tips. Patrons at my Neuron level and above can access these and many, many more hours of exam tutorial videos.
as well as over 100 printable resources from across the A-level over on psychboost.com. I do want to thank all the students and teachers who support Psychboost over on Patreon, especially during the development of the Research Methods Unit. It's their support that allows me to teach part-time so I can make Psychboost on YouTube for everyone. I also want to give a special shout out to the patrons who support me at the developer level. So thanks to them, and I'll see you in the next Research Methods video, Reliability.